Hey guys, so I haven't talked about every single movie that I've seen in uh, 2016, but I'm going to talk about the ones that I saw but didn't make reviews of. I didn't make reviews of these movies either because I watched them a lot later than the release dates, I was still at my job and that was interfering with my schedule, or I was just procrastinating. Which some of these are definitely because of that last thing, and I want to sort of rectify that in 2017. But a few of these I've only watched in the past couple of weeks, because I was looking at releases for the year and seeing what I missed that I might find interesting. So with these movies, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order just to make it simple. There's live action movies and animated movies, and they're all in different genres. And for these movies, I'm not going to talk about them too much, there's about 14 here. I'm just going to give my quick thoughts on them and then move on to the next one. Though if you want some more thoughts on the movies I'm about to talk about, and all of the movies that I saw in 2016, then check out this big discussion video I did with Jim talking about the movies of 2016. It's really long, it's about two and a half hours. We talk about almost everything. So if you want to see me and my friend Jim talk about movies for two and a half hours, you can go check that out. But right now, let's talk about these other movies. The first one is April of the Extraordinary World. This is an animated film from the same people that did uh, Persepolis. I hope I'm saying that right. So it's a French animated film, and it was pretty fun. It's sort of like the steampunk alternate history thing, where scientific progress sort of just halted, and we just end up with a steampunk world. And unfortunately, that means, like, all the trees in Europe are gone. I don't think the movie is quite as profound as Persepolis was, but this one is more fun. It's a very fun adventure animated movie. And up next is Deepwater Horizon. And I actually kind of really like it after thinking back on it. I was one of the people that was really upset after the BP oil spill back in 2010, and this is a pretty good telling of it, though some things might be over the top, but it does make it a little bit devastating once you realize, oh, this actually happened, people died. And then of course the devastation to the ocean and the BP people being so incompetent. If anything, I'd say watch it for Kurt Russell's performance. He's always pretty fun. Then we have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which I didn't like as much as everybody else did. I was re-watching a couple of the Harry Potters before going to see this, and I was just having so much more fun with the Harry Potters than I was with this. Maybe it's because I care about the Harry Potter characters, and I don't really care about the characters in Fantastic Beasts other than uh, the, the guy Dan Fogler, I guess, because his character was actually really funny and you could actually connect with him. And then there's the plot, which feels kind of convoluted, and, um, yeah, I just didn't really like it that much. Then there's Green Room, which I actually really, really liked. I probably liked the, it the most out of all of the, uh, the movies on this list. Green Room is from the same director of Blue Ruin, which I really love. And like in that, a lot of the story is told visually, uh, especially throughout the beginning, and there's a lot of shocking, tense moments in this. And with, um, Patrick Stewart, of all things, being an antagonist, so I'd really recommend seeing Green Room, it's fantastic. I think it's actually on Amazon Prime right now, so if you have that, watch it. Then there's Ice Age Collision Course. Holy shit, that is bad. It's really bad. Like, I watched all of the Ice Ages before going to see uh, Collision Course, and man, it's by far the worst one. They just keep getting worse. I really should have done a video on it, but I didn't do it in time, because it's, it's one of those really bad animated movies that uh, I, I feel like like, would get a lot of hits if I did a video on it. But, uh, unfortunately, I didn't do one. Uh, like I said, um, I was doing my job at the time, so I never did it. But Collision Course, yeah, it's really, really bad. Um, of all the Ice Ages, just watch the first one, really. That's all, all you need to watch. And even, even then, it's not really that good. I just like it for nostalgia's sake, because I, I love dinosaurs and stuff. And prehistoric life, that is. Not, not just dinosaurs. Next up is The Killing Joke, which I feel like I'm a bit more lenient on than other people, just because I'm not a big comic book guy. But I do understand where the hate is coming from for this movie. And one thing I wish that they did is uh, somebody actually, like, recolored the scenes for the, uh, the second half to make them look better. And I don't know why they didn't do that for the movie, because uh, uh, somebody that did that gift set with um, a bunch of the scenes recolored from this movie to make look more like the comic book uh, that, those look fantastic, but this, it just looks really, really dull. Which I guess they wanted to do to make it match the Batman animated series, but still it's dull, and there, of course, the controversial stuff, um, is weird. I'd say watch it only if you're a very big Batman fan and you want to see everything. Then there's The Little Prince that was shafted before its release. Thankfully, Netflix did pick it up, and I rewatched it recently. Um, I don't really like it as much as other people, mainly because of the second half of the movie, but I do really like the first half, and I love the stop-motion animated segments. It's just very unfortunate that Paramount got wet feet and pulled it from theaters before it was even released, 
because I think it could have done well if they just marketed it. And that makes me want to praise it a little bit more, but I know I'm not as fond of the movie as some other people. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. I think it's good. Like I said, I have some problems with the second half. Uh, I really love the first half, though. Then we have The Lobster, which uh, I thought was interesting. It's It definitely says some things about relationships that um, are very weird, uh, or I guess the w way society views relationships, um, of how, like, everybody has to have a perfect partner or a soulmate that has, like, the same kind of quirks that you do. Um, but the movie is very weird. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's, it's very, very weird. It has uh, Colin Farrell as the main character, and then... Uh, a bunch of uh, side characters, like, they have John C. Riley in it, of all things. Uh, I thought that was hilarious when I first saw him in the movie. But The Lobster, I, I think, is very interesting. Um, I'd give it a watch if you're confused about relationships in general, because it's it's definitely one of those movies that, that makes you think about, like, the way society talk talks about relationships. So, I'd watch it for that. Um... Uh, the humor in it uh, can be pretty funny too, though. Uh, they have they have this world where everything is not uh, uh, everything is exact. Like you can't have a half size of a shoe. You just have to have it like an actual size, like a, not a, not thirteen and a half. It has to be thirteen or fourteen. So it's like one of those movies. It's it's very interesting. I I give it a watch if you like quirky comedies. Then there's Magnificent Seven, which I actually really enjoyed. Um, I love the cast in it, um, Denzel, Chris Pratt, um, Vincent D'Onofrio, a bunch of the, uh, others, they're, they're all really great, and it does feel like an old-school western. I, I really liked it for that. Um, even, like, some of the score, which is by James Horner, which is, uh, his last score he ever did before he, uh, he died. But, yeah, James Horner, uh, if you don't know who, who that is, uh, you probably know him for Land Before Time, because he did the, um, the soundtrack for that. And... Magnificent Seven, it really does feel like an old-school West Western. When um, they first go into the town and they have a bit of a standoff, um, they, there's a bit of, like a silence and everything, and it's it's really fun. I I really enjoyed it. So uh, if you if you like old-school westerns like you know the um, the Dollars trilogy and all that, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, um, you know all those Sergio Le Leone uh, uh, westerns, you'll probably like this. It's it's really fun. Then we have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This was just kind of weird and not weird, but as in uh, odd, but weird as in I don't know what they were trying to do, but it it, it just ended up being sort of like, eh, whatever. Uh, it's a Tim Burton movie, and a lot of people said it was like Tim Burton returning to what Tim Burton was, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, I don't know. The, it's interesting. It it seems kind of like X Men, uh, to an extent. Um, but it gets really, really silly. Uh, very silly at the end, especially with Samuel Jackson, which I talk about in the uh, discussion video that me and Jim did, where Samuel Jackson is just like hamming it up, and it, it's really funny. I'd say just watch it for that. At first, he he a acts a little bit intimidating, but then he just like completely hams it up, and it's it's really funny. Then there's Nerve, which I thought was a very interesting concept for a movie where there's this uh, this app that um, you live stream yourself doing like tr uh, dares and you get money for doing it and uh, people dare you what what to do and uh, the uh, this girl uh, meets up with this guy and they're both doing these these dares and um, it gets really really dangerous like very dangerous it's, it, it's the kind of thing that cannot happen in real life. Um, and because, like, there would be, like, so many lawsuits everywhere. But, yeah, it was very fun. I watched it with, uh, with a couple of friends, and we were, we were, like, kind of, like, tense on the edge of our seats with some of, the, some of these things that they were doing. Um, it gets kind of dumb at the end, though, but it's fun for what it is. I, I liked it. Um, it's not, really, like, the greatest movie. Like I said, the end doesn't, uh, really, like, seem to make that much sense. Um... I mean, it makes sense, but it's like, it, it feels, meh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, Nerve, it's it's alright. Uh, if you like that kind of concept, I'd say watch it. Then there's Pop Star, which I really enjoyed. It's basically a pop version of Spinal Tap, and it's hilarious. It's, there, there are so many really, really great jokes in here, and very great performances. It's from the Lonely Island people. So, it, 
If you like them, you will definitely love this because it is really hilarious. It's uh, besides um, Green Room, this is also another one of my favorites on this list. Um, Popstar is amazing. If you haven't seen it, um, definitely watch it. If you like uh, stuff like Pinal Spinal Tap and mockumentaries, uh, this this is like right up your alley if you like that stuff. Then the second to last one, Storks, which was eh. If this is what Warner Brothers is going to do between the Lego movies, then I, I'm not going to be really looking forward to them. The animation is alright. I like the animation on Tulip and her character design. I liked her ever since I saw her in the, uh, the first trailer. But everything else, I, I'm just kind of sort of lukewarm towards. It's, it's not that great. It's not very good. But I don't think it's a terrible movie by any means. Uh, it's just like a very below average uh, animated movie but I don't think it's like a terrible one. Which is why I was surprised when I saw this guy called uh, Categorist on YouTube, posted a video on YouTube and uh, posted on his Twitter saying that this was a movie that they walked out on. And I was just like kind of flabbergasted at that. I was like, really? This is the movie you walked out on? So it kind of makes me want to defend it more because it's definitely not like a Norm of the North or a Strange Magic. It's not like one of those movies. So. I, I don't know. I feel like some people are just really, really soft as far as to what, what they think is really bad. Like, there's this one guy who really hates Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, but I actually think that's one of the better movies from Sony Animation. Anyway, enough talking about other people and their opinions. I just thought Storks was below average. Then the final thing on this list is Swiss Army Man, which was ridiculous, and I loved it. Um, I don't think it's probably going to be on my top 7 or anything, uh, but I did really enjoy it just because it's like Paul Dano, which was has been one of my favorite actors to watch uh, uh, Especially because of his performance uh, in, as Brian Wilson and uh, Love and Mercy But also because Daniel Radcliffe is in this and he plays a farting corpse and <laughs> It's it's funny uh, Like if you like both those actors and want to see them do ridiculous stupid things then watch this movie and Swiss Army Man also gave me one of my favorite quotes if you don't know Jurassic Park, you don't know shit. So those are the other movies that I saw in 2016 that I did not do reviews on. And like I said in the beginning of the video, check out the discussion video that I did with Jim talking about pretty much every movie that came out in 2016. So if you've seen any of the films that I talked about in this video, tell me down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye.